or maybe even suspension. I've heard guys that are very, very advanced that do three week blasts on testosterone suspension injecting. Welcome to Vigorous PEDs. I'm Coach Steve. Short cycles versus long cycles. What is the best approach and which of these two options will give you the most amount of muscle tissue, the least amount of side effects, the best possible blood work, and which option will give you the most amount of muscle you can maintain while you're doing a cruise afterwards or you're doing a post cycle therapy. So which of these options is best? But we have to keep in mind that we can't really compare a low dose short cycle versus a high dose long cycle. That isn't really comparable. So let's stick to the following parameter. You have 10 grams of testosterone to play with of a ester of your choice. So that could be testosterone enantate, testosterone propionate, acetate, cypionate, whatever ester you feel is best. That's the ester that you will stick to in this comparison. So let's say we have 10 grams of testosterone enantate to play with. A short cycle of six weeks would result in about 1700 milligrams of testosterone per week. An eight week short cycle would result in about 1250 milligrams of testosterone per week. And a longer cycle of let's say 16 weeks, that's what? 600, 700 milligrams of testosterone per week. 20 week cycle would be 500 milligrams of testosterone per week. So let's take these two comparison points. We have the same amount of hormones that we can take but we space them out over short periods or long periods. Which of these options would result in the most amount of muscle tissue, best possible blood work, least amount of side effects, and most amount of muscle tissue you can sustain after this cycle has been completed. So let's take the six week example first. Now, assuming you come from hormone replacement or you're coming from a natty status, you're raising, you know, your total amount of hormonal intake from well, let's say somewhere at the top or slightly over the reference range, let's say between 1,000 nanograms per deciliter to, you know, maybe 1,500 nanograms per deciliter if you're on generous hormone replacement for bodybuilders at one milligram of testosterone per one pound of body weight at 10% body fat. That usually gave me, you know, around 1,350 nanograms per deciliter, maybe 1,500 nanograms per deciliter. So it's slightly over the reference range, a little bit generous. Let's say I were to jump one day to the next to 1700 milligrams of testosterone per week. First thing I would notice is of course, increased protein synthesis. Now this increased protein synthesis is unfortunately not dose dependent. So ideally would like to get more protein synthesis for a higher dose, but it doesn't really play out that way. It's usually protein synthesis is reasonably high, but it declines and you'll need more hormones to raise this protein synthesis marginally because your body doesn't, unfortunately, doesn't really want to be that big. It wants to be bigger than your natural baseline, obviously, when you go on hormones. So you might be able to get those tw first 20 kilos relatively easily. But after you gain more and more and more size, the rate of protein synthesis reduces for the actual amount of new muscle tissue you can gain because protein synthesis is maintaining this surplus of extra muscle mass that you already gained. So let's say you have um, 50 grams of protein, uh, protein synthesis per day, which would, you know, technically result in 18 kilos per year, you know, 50 times 365, it's about 18 kilos, 19 kilos of, you know, uh, muscle tissue per year. But this 50 grams of protein synthesis that you have every day, partially, is there to maintain your muscle mass that you've already built. Look at it this way. Let's say you don't have so much muscle mass and you're only on hormone replacement and you're jumping straight to this 1700 milligram testosterone per week for a six week period. You know, in the beginning, you don't have so much muscle mass. So, you know, assuming you have 50 grams of protein synthesis per day to play with, five grams of that protein synthesis is there to sustain the muscle mass that you have and you have 45 grams of protein synthesis to build new muscle tissue with. So that's going to be a significant boost in additional muscle mass. Now, as you grow this ratio of new muscle tissue that you get from the limited amount of protein synthesis that you have will shift to maintenance of the muscle tissue you've already built. So let's say you go from 45, five to 40, 10, 30, 20, 
545. And now the majority of this limited protein synthesis that you have is being used to recover and maintain the amount of muscle mass that you've already built. And there's only a small percentage left that can actually build new muscle tissue. So let's say 45 grams is being utilized to maintain and recover the muscle mass that you have because you're going through all these strenuous hypertrophy workouts. And, you know, the more muscle you gain, the higher the intensity needs to be to sustain it and progress further. And now you only have five grams of protein synthesis per day left to build new muscle tissue with. Now, I know we got a little bit off topic here, but it's something you definitely need to understand before we really go into the comparison because protein synthesis determine the rate of accrual of muscle tissue as you proceed through your cycle. And unfortunately, there's no dose dependent amount of protein synthesis related to your testosterone intake. You can increase the synergy with testosterone, growth hormone, insulin, maybe thyroid hormones, etc., and all the other performance enhancing drugs we can choose from. But testosterone will only yield so much protein synthesis by itself. So let's go back to the short term cycle of six weeks at 1700 milligrams of testosterone per week. You're jumping from your, um, you know, close to the reference range amount to supra, supra physiological amounts from one day to the next. Now, you'll get a tremendous boost in protein synthesis. And again, because your muscle baseline is not that high, and perhaps you had some muscle memory in the past where your baseline was higher. Again, we're coming from a cruise here or, you know, a natural state. Assuming you have some muscle memory going on for yourself, you will build a significant amount of muscle tissue or restore a significant amount of muscle tissue within the first four weeks. So you're basically jumping from zero to a thousand and within four weeks on this, uh, you know, a generous dose, <laughs> very generous dose, 1700 milligrams testosterone per week, you will recover all of the muscle you have lost and completely rely on muscle memory to restore you to your highest possible weight um, you had in the past. And then you have two weeks left to build additional muscle tissue on your previous best and the amount of muscle tissue that you had in the past. So now you have two weeks left to actually build new muscle tissue. And 1750 milligrams should be more than enough to build a significant amount of muscle mass in these two weeks that you have left on cycle. Now, by shortening the duration of testosterone exposure at higher dosages, you're going to see tremendous changes in your body weight. And that is usually going to result in impaired sleeping quality because the rapid increase of body weight is usually what causes the most amount of side effects. That's why I always recommend people to do cardio, whether that's in the off season or during the contest prep, because you're climatizing your heart to this increased amount of body weight. So if you're going, let's say from uh, your, you know, you're maintaining at 90 kilos and you're throwing in this 1700 milligrams of testosterone per week, you're going to gain weight rapidly. And let's say, let's throw an arbitrary number at it, five kilos per week. So that's almost 10 pounds per week. So over the course of um, six weeks, you know, considering the rate of growth is uh, consistent, you would gain 60 pounds or about 30 kilos, maybe 25 kilos, 60 pounds. That's a significant increase in body weight. And it's going to put a lot of stress on your heart. Because your heart won't be able to grow regarding its cardiovascular endurance with this rapid increase in body weight. And unfortunately, the 60 pounds or 25 kilos is not only going to be muscle mass, it's going to be a significant amount of water retention as well. And whether that water retention comes from the increased amount of food intake that you have alongside this you know, surplus of testosterone, or it comes from the water retention that you have from testosterone being so freakingly anabolic or the extra water retention you get from estrogen which of course is going to go up regardless if you're using an aromatized inhibitor because like i mentioned before when you have super physiological dosages of testosterone estradiol should be a little bit higher as well so now you're holding water from both ends the testosterone and the estradiol and of course your workout capacity is going to go up your nitrogen retention is going to go up your mineral retention is going to go up and your potential for glycogen retention is going to up, go up as well. You know, considering you're probably increasing your caloric intake and especially your carbohydrate intake 
during these six weeks, Mega Blast. Now, what of this, what of this increased body weight, tremendously increased body weight, is actually sustainable after you come off this six weeks blast? The nitrogen retention is not sustainable. That's just a temporary effect of anabolic steroids. The estrogenic water retention, again, it's a temporary effect. And at one point, as your testosterone levels decline, and you go back to hormone replacement or do a post-cycle therapy and you come off cycle, really, really come off cycle, this high estradiol is going to decline as well and the water retention is going to decline with it. Same as with the superphysiological dose of testosterone that you were taking. The glycogen retention is going to go down. The mineral retention is going to go down. Everything is going to go down and you're left with the actual amount of muscle tissue that you gained during this very short period that you were on, you know, significant dose of testosterone. I don't think you're going to maintain most of it. Maybe, maybe you put on 500 grams, just an arbitrary number, 500 grams of muscle tissue that you gained during the six weeks period. Let's say 100 grams per week. Again, because this arbitrary number of 50 grams of protein synthesis that you get per day. Let's say it raises to 60 grams protein synthesis per day. Unfortunately, the majority is there just to recover your muscles that you stimulated with hypertrophy workouts. So the majority isn't even being recruited to build new muscle tissue with. So when you look at the six week period and the drug exposure that you had during the six weeks period, I think the majority that you will get is side effects. Whether that comes from the increased body weight, increasing your blood pressure, or the increased water retention, increasing your blood pressure, not being able to um, train your cardiovascular system sufficiently in the short duration that you gained a significant amount of body weight. Um, yeah, it's, I don't think it's a suitable approach in the beginning, in the beginning. So we'll get back to advanced stages of bodybuilding a little bit later in this video, because when you're advanced, there might be a place for it. It, it might have, hold some merit. So don't dismiss it right from the beginning. Now, of course, it changes a little bit when you do a short six-week cycle and a four-week clean out and then another short six-week cycle. So you do like, basically like a 10-week rotation, similar to a push-pull legs program. You do um, three days on, one day off, for example. And in that rest day, you're just recovering in the meantime, but you're sustaining all the muscle mass that you have. So it's the same with a six-week cycle and a four-week down period where you don't take any hormones. You're basically recovering in the meantime and, and allowing your body to fall back down to a little bit of a baseline. And then you start another six-week cycle. Again, that's a little bit more for advanced bodybuilding. So we'll discuss that towards the end of this video. So let's compare this short six-week cycle to a longer cycle. Let's say 16 weeks at 625 milligrams per week or 20 weeks at 500 milligrams per week. Now, the difference between jumping from hormone replacement, 250 to 625 or 500 milligrams per week, is not that significant. So in the beginning, <laughs> you wouldn't see tremendous results, especially not comparing them to the results you would get within the four, first four weeks on a six weeks cycle with, you know, three times, four times the dose. So the change is that you're going to undergo when you go from 250 tests to 500 tests or 625 milligrams of testosterone per week are far less dramatic. Um, for a lot of people, that change is not going to be that substantial and they're going to be disappointed. Those are usually the guys that don't have patience. And again, in this game of bodybuilding or fitness enthusiasm, you need a tremendous amount of patience because you don't get freaky big overnight. Uh, most of us don't, at least, you know, unless you have awesome genetics, but then, um, you know, you're probably already 300 pounds on your second day of training. Now, during the 16 to 20 week period, you obviously have a much lower exposure to exogenous testosterone because it's only 500 to 625 milligrams per week. So the results, the immediate results are not going to be as dramatic as a short cycle at a higher dose, given that the budget is, uh, you know, comparable between the short cycle and the long cycle. So a six to eight week cycle would give you more immediate results compared to a long cycle at, you know, same dose just spread out over a longer period of time. So let's say you do 16 weeks at 625 milligrams. It might take you six to eight weeks before you're back at your highest possible weight and highest possible strength you had at the end of your last cycle before you decided to jump into a cruise and 
you know, clean out a little bit and take care of your blood work. Now, if you were, you know, natural, it would yeah, probably take you about the same time. So let's say the first six weeks of your 16 week protocol is just restoring the amount of muscle mass that you had through muscle memory. Now you have 10 weeks left at 625 milligrams per week. So that's six weeks or 10 weeks compared to the two to four weeks you had before. So that's a much longer period of time, much longer period of time, but it's a considerably lower dose. Now, during this time that you restored the amount of muscle mass that you have at, during this long cycle, so let's say the first six to eight weeks you're restoring the muscle mass that you have, you shouldn't notice tremendous side effects. You should slowly increase in body weight. If you're doing morning cardio, which you should be doing, you have plenty of time to acclimatize to this slowly increasing body weight so your cardiovascular system doesn't take a beating. <laughs> so, you know, on a six-week cycle, eight-week cycle, that much amount of testosterone, rapidly gaining body weight, stairs will be your worst enemy. But on a long cycle, stairs will just be another small thing you have to jump over. It's, it's a non-issue. So you'll notice that the cardiovascular endurance will grow alongside the slow increase of muscle mass that you have due to limited drug exposure. Now, ideally... You have 10 weeks left, yeah, at these longer, longer cycles at a moderate dosage. During these 10 weeks, you have a lot more protein synthesis occurring cumulatively compared to the last two to four weeks that you had during a short cycle at a higher dosage. So this results in a more amount of muscle mass that you'll be able to sustain after you come off because now you've increased your baseline with maybe two kilos compared to the 500 grams of muscle mass that you gained towards the tail end of your short cycle. So when you look at it in a percentage wise, a short cycle is going to restore the muscle that you had previously a lot faster when you look at a time window. But when you look at the percentage of the cycle, at least 50% or maybe even 75%, 60% of the cycle is just there to restore the muscle mass that you have. But if you're doing a longer cycle, even though it takes a longer period of time to restore the muscle mass that you had previously, the percentage of the cycle is lower. So if it's six weeks of restoring muscle mass and you have 10 weeks left, that's less than 50% of the cycle that you're restoring muscle mass. If it's eight weeks on 20 weeks, again, it's less than 50%. But if it's four weeks out of six weeks to restore the muscle mass that you have, now you have less than 50% left to accrual new muscle tissue. So again, the consensus here, based on these examples, 500 grams on a short cycle, extra, 500 grams of extra muscle mass, compared to two kilos of extra muscle mass over a longer cycle, because we're taking 10 grams of testosterone as the total amount of anabolics that we're taking over these six week, eight weeks, 16 weeks, or 20 week periods, I feel... And based on all my experience with all of my clients is that a 20 week period is going to net you the most amount of muscle tissue for this limited amount of testosterone that we're willing to take. That being 10 grams of testosterone total. By the way, changes are not going to be that rapid. Blood pressure increases are not going to be that tremendous. Now, when you look at the lipids, when you compare a short cycle of six to eight weeks to a long cycle of, let's say, 16 to 20 weeks, I'm not really sure if there's consensus here what is best because lipids are not going to change that dramatically on a long cycle with, you know, lower drug exposure compared to a short cycle on higher drug exposure. Again, we'll have, we'll have moderate skewed lipid levels on a long cycle and tremendously skewed lipid levels on a short cycle at a higher dosage. But we'll have to take inflammation into consideration here. So hopefully in both scenarios, you're using pharmaceutical grade steroids, which shouldn't change inflammation levels tremendously. But if inflammation levels change a lot, considering you have the same amount of foam cells that could potentially form when you have skewed LDL concentrations, systemic inflammation is going to be the determining factor whether a short cycle or a long cycle is going to be more um, beneficial regarding cardiovascular health considering we're you know keeping estradiol in its favorable ranges so lipids don't skew as much as they uh, could potentially skew 
and you're doing all the, the health supplementations along the way to keep your LDL and HDL in its favorable ratios. Again, since the drug exposure is so high or considerably higher on a short cycle with the same budget of 10 grams of testosterone per, per, per cycle in total, then the systemic inflammation is going to determine which route is worse. Because there's something to say for, you know, significantly skewed lipid levels for a shorter period of time compared to moderately skewed lipid levels for a longer period of time. Because you're skewing these lipids for, again, a longer period of time. So now you have more potential for cardiovascular disease. Even though on the blood work results at a short cycle, it might look worse. <laughs> You know, based on the blood work results. Again, we're, the drug duration and the exposure duration is much shorter. So it highly depends on your systemic inflammation. And I would highly advise you to watch this video about the carrier oils. And if you already watched it, just watch it again. Do me a favor. If it's already liked, you don't have to like. But if you watched it and you didn't like yet, now would be a good time to like that video. Much appreciated. So regarding the lipids, it really depends on the systemic inflammation and the, uh, you know, what you put in place to control lipid concentrations. You'll see that liver enzymes, of course, are going to be higher on a short cycle simply because of the drug exposure and the amount of carrier oil that you're injecting over shorter periods of time. Regarding the erythropoic properties of testosterone and its effect on overall hematocrit and red blood cell production, I feel that during short cycles at higher dosages, the changes in hematocrit and red blood cells is significantly increased, but it highly depends on your individual response to testosterone. And of course, you know, we're just using testosterone here as an example. So if you were to do a uh, short cycle with a high dose of primobolin or boldenone or anadrol or any other compound that has a lot of um, EPO or erythropoic activity, you'll see a significant increase in red blood cell production compared to a cycle of a longer period at a lower um, drug exposure because it's a dose dependent fashion and if you limit your drug exposure to 500 milligrams or 625 milligrams of testosterone per week the amount of red blood cell destruction will compensate for the amount of increase of red blood cell production that you get because you have to look at the active life of 90 days to 100 days of red blood cells. So if you produce an increased amount of red blood cell more, moderately compared to a short cycle, then the increase in red blood cell destruction and uh, metabolization and, you know, reaching the end of the, its active life should compensate more than enough for the increase in production that you get. So keep that in mind. When you accelerate red blood cell production with very high doses of testosterone, the amount of red blood cell destruction will happen after your cycle is finished because it's only six weeks, maybe eight weeks, but the active life of red blood cells is longer. It's, you know, 90 days to 120 days. So that's months compared to six weeks or eight weeks. That's almost two months, right? So the red blood cells will stay elevated after the short cycle at higher dosages and then start to metabolize and crash, raising bilirubin concentrations. The way this works is that red blood cells eventually get metabolized and destroyed, raising hemoglobin concentrations in the bloodstream, which then metabolizes in bilirubin. And it's the bilirubin that can cause jaundice because it has a little bit of a pigmentation effect. So you might see that in the jaundice of the eyes or the skin, you get a little bit of yellowing or yellowing of the stool. Now, I don't think it's a tremendous issue when you go on a short cycle of six to eight weeks and you get a lot of erythropoic activity, but it's something to keep into consideration because again, these are all markers that are going to be skewed during the cycle and after the cycle. Because again, red blood cells have a much longer active life compared to your cycle duration. So that pretty much covers it for the blood work. Again, you know, the, the stress on the kidneys might be tremendous or elevated on a short cycle as well because you're gaining body weight rapidly. So, you know, you'll see a lot more uh, BUN and creatinine increases because of the, the protein synthesis is going to go up and this rapid increases in body weight will result in probably rapid increases in creatinine levels. So keep that into consideration as well. When you're a moderately advanced and enhanced bodybuilder or general fitness enthusiast, I feel that a long cycle of moderate dosages of testosterone or any other performance enhancing drugs that you're willing to take, 
I feel that a long cycle at moderate dosages is much more productive regarding the accrual of muscle tissue and minimizing side effects while keeping your blood work the best possible compared to short cycles at higher dosages. Because again, you'll have to look at the protein synthesis over this overall period. First, you have to restore the amount of muscle mass that you had in the past before you went on a cruise or decided to do a post-cycle therapy. And even though the results are not as dramatic over the long exposure that you have to moderate doses of testosterone or other PEDs, I feel that the amount of protein synthesis that you get um, is going to result in a lot more muscle tissue at the end. And this is the muscle tissue that you end up maintaining because it's been formed on a much lower dose of anabolics compared to, you know, a smaller amount of muscle tissue that you gained on a much higher dose of anabolics during this short six week or eight week cycle. So please keep that into consideration. You want to build the most amount of muscle tissue for the least amount of side effects, right? And when you have 10 grams of testosterone to play with, it's probably even better to incrementally increase the dose as you go along. So you go from 250 tests, for example, at the end of your cruise to 400 milligrams of testosterone per week for 10 weeks, which is 4,000 milligrams in total, four grams of testosterone in total. And now you have 10 weeks left on 600 milligrams of test. So instead of doing 500 tests for 20 weeks through and, you know, maybe you restore the amount of muscle mass that you have within eight weeks and now you have four weeks, six weeks left of uh, building new muscle tissue and then you kind of stagnate because unfortunately there's always a dose dependent point in which you stagnate. So why don't we restore the muscle mass on the lowest effective dose of 400 milligrams of testosterone per week for 10 weeks? You know, I have to be more patient, obviously, because it'll take a significant longer period of time just to get back uh, up to your maximum muscle, maximum workout capacity. And now you have 10 weeks left on 600 milligrams per week, which is going to increase your protein synthesis a little bit, resulting in increased protein synthesis for a prolonged period of time, resulting in muscle tissue that you gained on the lowest effective dose to raise your baseline maybe a kilo or two higher. And I really hope that helps and I really hope that clarifies it. Now, when you're very advanced, it might still be better to do a short cycle because of the amount of drug exposure that you need to gain a little bit of muscle mass as this ratio between protein synthesis that you need to maintain your muscle mass and accrual new muscle tissue is so small that that 500 grams that you gain during this six-week cycle is all you're going to get anyway because you're so advanced. You're already 260 pounds or 70 pounds or 300 pounds, whatever. So you might be better off during doing short cycles with you know significant drug exposure because a long period... A long cycle with, you know, moderate drug exposure would not increase your baseline. <laughs> it would not result in more muscle tissue. So when you're very advanced and you need another 500 grams on top of your, uh, or you need another pound on top of your 300 pounds, it might be better to do a short cycle at a significant dose because that's the only way you're going to gain more muscle tissue because you need a significant dose to push your baseline slightly higher. Now, I think for 99% of my audience, that's not going to be uh, <laughs> the scenario that they're in. And if you are, um, good luck. You're probably sticking to short esters because you need everything in and out of your system as fast as possible. So that's testosterone propionate, not testosterone enitate or cypionate, or maybe even suspension. I've heard guys that are very, very advanced that do three-week blasts on testosterone suspension, injecting 150 milligrams of testosterone suspension uh, over the day. So that's 50 milligrams, you know, three times per day, spaced eight hours apart. Um, I don't know how to deal with the post-injection pain, but they didn't mention it. So I'm, I'm sure they're just spiking all the body parts with a little bit of <laughs> suspension and they're able to uh, train through it. And they do that for three weeks. So that's three weeks on 1,000 milligrams of testosterone per week. So that's 3,000 milligrams testosterone suspension which is 100% testosterone. It is a significant higher dose than 1,000 milligrams of testosterone enitate, which is only a percentage of testosterone. 
And those guys would cycle three weeks, four weeks on, and then one week off and schedule their deal out with this one week off. So that's another way going forward. That's a very short cycle with, you know, significant drug exposure, considering it's testosterone suspension. But I think most of the people are not never going to reach that point and uh, will probably find it extremely painful. But I know people that did it and they're um, very, very muscular with pretty good blood work. I'll say that, even though they're running a letrozole. <laughs> You know, they're running letrozol during the period that they're doing a testosterone suspension because it's, a, you know, it's a lot of potential for aromatization. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you guys so much for watching. I would prefer long cycles with limited drug exposure and only increase the dosages as needed when you get stuck making proscaris. And that's how you build muscle tissue on the lowest effective dose that is not going to leave you when you come off cycle. It might lose less cosmetically pleasing but it's still there just not as big unfortunately if you're looking for the most comprehensive guides to bodybuilding pharmacology you can find those ebooks on my website at vigorousteve.com shop i got tons of other articles published for free in the article section and if you're looking for personalized advice you can find the rates to my services on my website as well in the services section you can contact me through the contact form if you're interested vigorous crew you know what to do like share subscribe and comment again much appreciated follow me on instagram at vigor steve so i can match my followers on instagram to my subscribers here on youtube thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video